so proud of our guys and how they competed from start to finish. Um, and, uh, you know, this, our thing all year has been just compete level and bring everything you can and, and all that. And, uh, and they did. Um, there were a lot of things out there that I disagreed with that, you know, I think any Indiana fan would disagree with. But we're going to be undeterred. We're going to be back here Monday night looking to extend the series. And uh, we're going to come at them even harder. You know, we have to. We have to. We don't have a choice. Rick, you're up eight with about two and a half minutes to go in this game. What I just you... watched the ending, so you don't need to remind me. I saw everything that happened. Everything. What to you was the difference everything. in that? Everything. Everything that happened, yeah. Anybody else? Sure. I guess just beyond just the last few minutes, I mean, what uh, what did you see just change for you guys offensively uh, between the first half and second? You guys obviously were hitting a ton of shots in the first. What well, we have different? guys, you, you know, we have a lot of guys stepping up into bigger minutes in Tyrese's absence. And so, um, you know, we slowed down a little bit down the stretch. And, you know, that's that's a time of game where, where we're set, where we're, the way we're set up right now, we've got to keep, we've got to keep tempo in the game. So, you know, that's something that we got to do. And, and, um, you know, we missed some shots and there was some plays where they could have gone a different way. You know, I, it's the best I can say it, you know, um, you know, just very disappointed, you know, just very disappointed. But, uh, but the guys, I mean, this group, the way they're battling, you know, and we're going to we're going to come at these guys harder on Monday. All right. And our fans, our fans need to come out and they get they need to be louder than they've ever been. And we've got to extend this series. We got to get back on that plane for game five. I mean, that's that's what we got to do. Rick, just on that second to last play, as Nimhart's uh, coming back up the floor, just keep take us through your thought process as you're weighing, you know, whether to call a timeout, whether, whether to let him keep going. How did you uh, see that breakdown? Well, you know, with eight eight or nine seconds left, and you're you're in transition after a miss, you know, it's I trust our players to be able to create a better shot than calling timeout and having them set their defense and you know um, run run you know our end of game stuff on their video and show their players. You know, it's just a it's more of a play basketball type situation, and um, and we've done well this year. Trusting our players. Nimhar, even before just the game that he had, just sort of what did you think about his overall performance today? Courageous. Our guys, our guys played a courageous game. You know they did. I, you know, Nimhard was great. Um, Pascal was great. Uh, Turner was great. You know, McConnell. What can you say about him? You know, um, our bench guys fought, and so you know, we came up a little short tonight, but but we will be back on Monday. And we will be punching even harder. Rick, the shot didn't fall, but your your last play, the the where the guys lined up like wide receivers and ran down the floor. Where where did you find that one, and how long have you had it? And uh, just how how did you think it worked tonight? I mean, we've had it for a while, you know. I mean, we was just to hand you hand you our playbook. <laughs> Is that you want? <laughs> uh, it was a good. It was a good look. It's a. It's a play that's that uh, was conceived by Mike Weiner, who, who came up with it. And you know, we've we've used it a couple times over the last couple of years, and and gotten gotten looks on it. And so you know, um, same situation happens next game. We'll have something a little bit different, and hope we get the same kind of look. Uh, no one in NBA history has come back from down 3-0. Why, in your view, is this group equipped to do it? We just we got to look at what's in front of us. You know, we got the best fans in the NBA here. Um, we got the greatest basketball building on the planet, and we got we got another game in front of them um, to go after these guys. And believe me when I tell you, we are going after them. Phil, obviously, especially after you guys performed as well as you did in the first half, just, I mean, how much does this, this one sting after the kind of performance that you had to put that game in the position where it was? Um, yeah, it sucks. Um, I thought, you know, we played, played well for uh, good periods of time. Um, 
yeah, definitely, definitely a tough one. Um, especially, you know, we had a lot of energy. The guys came out, um, you know, defending well, r running well, um, and we just, yeah, we just didn't didn't have in that fourth quarter. You know, we didn't have enough. Andrew, uh, Andrew, can you take us through just the last possession against Drew and what you saw there? And, and was it just a great player making a great player? Or what was your view of it? I guess just for either of you, obviously it was clear he was trying to get force in that first half, try to get to the paint. Um, just kind of how do you see it go in the second half when they're able to come back? Um, I, I thought they, yeah, we did a good job in the first half. Second half, um, I, not, not as much. Um, and and yeah, like they they made runs and and weren't able to just kind of like come back and 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 have that same intensity. We had a couple of turnovers. Um, and um, yeah, like against a team like that, you know, like no lead is safe. So we gotta we gotta play well to the end. For either of you, uh, Rick was just up here and said a couple of things, but among them was um, he said the Pacers are going after them, meaning the Celtics in Game Four. Was was that the message or the talk amongst you guys in the locker room immediately after? This Wait, game? what happened? Oh, Rick said that you guys are gonna go after them oh. in Game Four, meaning the Celtics. Okay, yeah, no, I think we, we, it's, a, it's a must game, must win for us. Um, we we got to give everything that we have. Um, obviously, um, to this point, we, we've had an incredible season, and and like nobody nobody wants to see it end. So we, we're gonna fight to the end, and um, you know, I think the guys for us is just let's get one game. You know, like we, we can't look ahead. Um, whatever is in front of us, like don't matter. Um, we got to focus on the on the next game, and. Um, give everything that we have to, to win that game. Pascal, you guys were crushing them in the paint. What did you see from when they went small that you liked that you could take advantage of? Um, I think it's just, just getting to the paint. You know, that's something that we, we, we can do well. Um, we just got to keep continue, continue to do that, hammer that, um, and, you know, just keep doing that. Drew, you've obviously been in a position a few times before of having to, to play the point and, and run the show when, when Ty's been out. Just, uh, you know, how have you seen yourself grow in all these, and what did you feel about, you know, what went well tonight? Obviously, you had 32, hit some big shots, obviously, before that last minute. What did you like about what you were able to do running the offense and getting downhill? Um, I think I think I just wanted to get the, get the pace going. I think I think we play best when everybody's touching it, and we're all moving, and we're playing kind of our Pacers hoops. And I, I just wanted to... Not necessarily force the issue, but just let it come to me a little bit. You guys are up eight-ish, I think, with two and a half minutes to go. What to you in those final couple minutes was the difference that got them over the hump? Um, yeah, I, I thought they got stopped. We, you know, and I don't the end. You know, they they scored timely baskets. Um, you know, big shots from them. Um, and and you know, I thought I thought we played well. Obviously, you know, you can you can argue, you know, calls here, call there, but at the end of the day, um. Yeah, we just didn't get the job done at the end. Drew, you and TJ um, obviously had big games in the backcourt tonight. How much confidence has he instilled in you? What have you learned from him just about how to grow as a point guard? Learned a lot from TJ. Just um, ever since I got here, he's been super supportive, always pushing confidence into me. Um, I've learned little things of how, to, how he gets to his spots and how he plays with pace and how he just doesn't let the people force him into anything he doesn't want to get into. So. Um, I've learned a lot from just observing um, and seeing how he gets things done, how he goes about himself every day. Pascal, that was a, kind of a breakout performance for Drew. Uh, I know not the ending you guys wanted to have, but what, what have you seen out of him uh, in the time you've been with him, and, and what do you see in his future? Yeah, no, I'm proud of his growth. Like, I think just um, it's, it's a tough game when, you know, uh, our starting point guard is, is, not, is not in the game. and. Um, you learn that before the game, and 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 it takes a lot of just maturity and um, growth to be able to step in there and, and and play the way that he did tonight. It was incredible, like uh, controlling the pace of the game, um, getting people to their spots, um, and you know, like I think that's something that he's always been able to do. And I think that you know, every time that he has that opportunity, he showed it. Um, and tonight was was another night, you know, where he just he just you know showed that yeah, like he belongs, and 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 um, he's a big part of our team and. Um, so yeah, like proud of him, and and obviously we didn't win the game, but I thought you know he controlled the game so well tonight, and and uh, was a big reason for you know us being in the game.
Pascal, you've been playing with um, TJ for a couple months now. What is it like to play with a guy who's as desperate as him every night to just do anything to affect the game in a positive way? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I think we need everything that we can get from TJ. It's just his pace. Um, I say that every day, like, um, just with, with how much passion he plays the game and how hard he plays the game. And, um, you know, he's he's one of those guys that you want to have on your team. Um, and, and when he plays against you, you know, he's, he's annoying. So um, I think it's – the way he plays the game and and the, the pace that he brings to our team, you know, is is something that um, we really need. And and um, yeah, like I'm, I think I've watched him, you know, before and just being on this team now, you know, it's it's, it's awesome what he does. After the first two games, Miles had kind of talked about how he thought he could do better in those situations where he's gonna get a chance to post up against a smaller player. Just what do you see from him tonight to to maybe help settle you guys and get you guys going to start? Um, I think he did a good job in transition. Just where we was on him, just getting right to the front of the rim, um, and creating that uh, that advantage. I think um, him putting that pressure on the defense allows everybody to kind of flatten up the floor, and it, it gives more space for everybody on the perimeter. And um, he did a good job of establishing that early. You guys were obviously able to attack the paint a lot. Shot over, I think, 65% in the first half. Just what did you see? What did you like about what you got in the first half, and what did you see change, or what did they do differently in terms of keeping you away from what you want to do in the second half? Yeah, I mean, Boston's a great team, offensively and defensively. Um, but you know, our pace, especially in transition, you know, it makes or misses getting it out and, and attacking the rim. Um, I thought it was really good in the first half, and you know, we continue to try to do that in, um, in the second half. But you know, they made adjustments, and we got there a little bit, but not as much as we we would like. But um, credit them for you know, kind of getting back um, and making adjustments in the second half. TJ, you scored like two and a half minutes to go to put you guys up by eight. They still came back at the end there. What to you was the difference in that last stretch that got them over you guys? Um, you know, they just didn't go away. Um, you got to credit, give credit where credit's due. Um, they kept chipping away and, um, you know, just made one more play than we did. Uh, you know, we had a obviously a great crowd and um, unfortunate we didn't come out with the win. To do this without Tyrese and have a chance late, what did that say to you about what this team has done in this playoffs, this postseason, even all year? Yeah. Um, just one of those things where it was next guy up, and um, I think Andrew Nemhard um, took his game to another level tonight, but he's been playing at a high level all year and has really, really stepped his game up in the postseason. Um, you know, we aren't in that position without him. TJ, Rick just left here, and he was pretty fired up. He did not look like a guy who was ready to quit. What's you guys' mindset heading into the next game? The same. Um, obviously, this one stings, but um, there's no guy in this locker room that's that's packed it in. Um, you know, we're gonna try to get one here and, and and extend this series, and then go back to Boston and, and try to make things difficult. Um, but there's no guy in this locker room that's gonna quit. I'll tell you that much. TJ, um, at the end of the game, it looked like you went over to. Jairus and Obi and said, like, read the lips and said, like, I love you or something like that. What made you want to say that in that moment to them? And what does this team mean to you? Um, just two incredible human beings. Um, you know, what he said is obviously between us, but um, I got a lot of love for Jairus and Obi. And I got a lot of love for everyone in this locker room. Um, one of the best locker rooms I've ever been in, if not the best. Um, you know, and it's great group a great group to be around can you describe the feelings that you have when you play we talked about it before but when the crowd is going crazy you're hyped up you're going on a run and like just those moments where maybe it feels like you're a kid again yeah um our crowd i mean i i, don't, I can't speak for everyone um you know they you feel invincible sometimes playing in front of them just the energy that they bring and they give us um, you know, it's, you know, it takes our game to another level as players. I know I'm, I'm speaking for myself personally. Um, just an amazing, amazing, amazing fan base, um, that has, been, that has been here through the highs and the lows and, um, it's, it's incredible. I just want to ask you about the, uh, you guys didn't make a whole lot of threes tonight, but you have, I know you haven't seen the film of it, but did you like the looks you guys got and think you just missed some, or just how did you assess the, the shots you guys did take tonight? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we took any bad ones. Um, you know, we'll certainly see that tomorrow on film, but, um, 
just keep shooting. You know, if you're open, just shoot the ball. And, um, you know, if you do that, they'll fall. Um, you work on it every day, and, um, and that's what we got to do. Just the uh, mindset you guys had coming into this game without Tyrese, you know, knowing you all had to wrap. I think you said it the other night. Like, it's, a, it's not a one man, you know, one man to do it. Just how, um, you know, did you guys have any sort of, uh, you know, meeting or rallying cry to sort of to, to rally with that? Or just how did you guys approach that mindset knowing you wouldn't have your best player tonight? Um, I thought, I think we knew there was a chance after game two. Um, and it's one of those things where you just kind of got to be ready. And if he's going, great. If not, we talked about, you know, the way we needed to play and get the ball moving, you know, makes and misses, get out in transition, do what we do best. And, um, you know, I thought we, we did that tonight. T, you've obviously been a, a champion of Drew's really since he got here. I mean, what, where, where did you see him take it up a notch tonight, but also throughout these playoffs? He's made some big shots even beyond tonight. Obviously, he's taken on really big defensive assignments. What's, I guess, what have you seen that you didn't already see over the last few weeks, but also tonight in particular? I mean, the confidence he plays with is it's incredible. Um, you see him bringing the ball up the floor. He's getting people involved. I mean, he's open. He's shooting it and making it at a high level, I think mid-40s. And... Um, just, I mean, in the playoffs, in the regular season, he's coming off the bench. He's starting at two. He's starting at one. Um, he's the backup point guard. Um, I mean, as a kid at his age, you know, getting thrown around like that could, you know, maybe mess with your mental. But, I mean, he's just been – he's answered the bell all year. I mean, his whole career um, – there's no bigger fan of his game than me. Um, he's a really, really good player. And like I said, we would not be in this position without him. TJ, before the game, um, Rick Carlisle said you play like you haven't proven anything. Year nine for you, what do you feel like you maybe have proven You know, throughout the better part of a decade in the NBA? I don't know. Um, maybe just the energy that I bring um, on a daily basis. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, if I'm playing like I don't have anything to prove, I think it would be time for me to to retire. Um, it's one of those things where it just kind of puts a chip on my shoulder and continue to, um, you know, play extremely hard and do what this team needs for me.